Acts 4, 23 to 24 and 29 to 32. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voice together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Now consider, verse 29, now Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Verse 32. All the believers were in one heart, one mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this body that you are building. We thank you, Lord God, that this is your church. We submit it under the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that this is what you have ordained to happen. So I submit myself under your tutelage, and I ask, Lord God, that the words that I speak are spirit and life. I pray, Lord God, that the way I communicate, Lord, will be received, and I ask, Lord, that your spirit will be able to govern people's lives accordingly. We thank you, Lord God, for such a time as this, for this moment. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, complete this following statements for me. Two are better than, awesome, one bound, bound, band, one, where was that from? Drumline. Good, good, good. Teamwork makes the, awesome. That is amazing. So, we all are familiar with terminology of being together. I remember growing up, um, in Nigeria, my family, my, my initial family, my nuclear family was just my mom, my dad, my sister, and myself before my little brother was born, years before he was born. But also in our house, we had like 20 other people living in it. And for a very long time, I think up until I was 10 years old, I did not believe that my mom did not have them. I literally thought that they were my actual siblings. So I was walking around thinking that my 20-something-year-old uh, cousin came from my 40-something-year-old mother. My 30-something-year-old cousin came from my, because my dad had older siblings. So I had no idea that they were not my siblings, my blood-related siblings. I think when I found out, I literally cried. Because I was like, oh my God, you really, are, you're, you didn't come from my mom? Okay. Well, um, that's okay. But that was the kind of home that I grew up in. Anyone could come in and out of our house. Anyone could eat, go to the fridge, grab whatever they wanted. There was no permission to even sleep in our room. Sometimes in my room at night, I didn't know how many cousins were going to be on the floor. It was just a free-for-all for my cousins, but it was family. And people were there feeling comfortable, feeling free, telling me what to do. But I was the baby of the family, so I got away with a lot of stuff um, until one, my little brother came. But I was sheltered and cocooned with family. The thing about the book of Acts is that that is the unity book. That was what God placed in the Bible as a reminder to us that he values unity. He values the idea of togetherness. He values family. So the book of Acts being written was to the church. This was to the church where Jesus had already ascended and the Holy Spirit had come. And so there needed to be direction that was provided to those who are now members of the church. And so the book of Acts was written and the central theme for most of the book of Acts was on unity, was on one accord. So in a place of unity, it would say one accord. And one accord means to make, to agree, to harmonize, mutual agreement. 
The word accord is found in 11 times in the book of Acts. 11 times. So it tells you how important it is. Acts 1.14, I'll go through this quickly. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Acts 2.1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Acts 2.46, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and sickness of heart. When I think about Acts 2.46, I think about people who can cook. And I'm like, ooh, come on, Jesus. So, so basically, they were going house to house, visiting people who could cook, and nobody was hungry, sir. <laughs> Nobody was hungry. That's what we found in the book of Acts. It continues, Acts 5.12, and the hands of the apostles were, were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all in one accord. Acts 15.25, it seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. So God obviously places such great emphasis on being unified, on being together. It was actually the prerequisite for the establishment of the church. The first accord that you saw was when Jesus told them, go up to the room and wait for me. Over 200 people were there waiting on the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit was revealed and poured out and 3,000 was added to the number. So God was a God or is a God of gathering people together, creating spaces where people feel like it is home, like they can find home. So imagine that in some of these times that they were living in, there was no homelessness. They were so in unity that homelessness was not an issue. Some of the social issues that we see today, that we deal with today, that we have conversations about, is because the church of Jesus Christ has yet to perfect unity, has yet to perfect the one accordness. Because if the church perfected the one accordness, there wouldn't be any lack. Because the Bible said that they were all together and numbers did not matter because it was 3,000, it was 5,000. It was so many people that were gathered together. So numbers did not matter and it was one accord. So homelessness was not an issue. Hunger was not an issue. Single mothers were taken care of. The things that we deal with in our society that we're asking the government to fulfill was fulfilled by the church. So just imagine this environment where God was trying to build. It was literally God building this environment. And he was causing the people to come together, to work together. God was more concerned about their spirituality, but he was also concerned about what was happening physically. My first point is, when we are in one accord, the supernatural flow of God happens. I, I want to have five men. If five men can come up real quick to the stage. Real quick, five men. Real quick. I just want to show you something real quick and what it means naturally. So it's going to be real togetherness. I'm just telling you now. So your bro code, just, you know, do this. Okay. All right. So one person, don't stand there. Just stay here. Can you link up? Not you. Not you. Okay. All right. So come forward so people can see y'all all the way. Yep. Perfect, perfect. Now, I want you to try and break apart. Now, y'all hold on tight. Go ahead. Try. Do your best. Do your best. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. Shall we try one more time? Okay. You can go to the front. Maybe if you did the front, it, it might... <laughs> Why do you think that he's not able to break them apart? 
They're linked. They're together. So what happens when the church is together and they are linked? The enemy can't break up apart the church. So go ahead. and You want to try again? Okay. I want to do one more. So now I want you guys to go in a circle. So link up. So you link. Yep. Perfect. 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 All right. Don't let him in that circle now. Try and jump in. Do <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. <laughs> you saw that every time he tried to, to attack, he tried to come against. You saw that he couldn't do it. But here's what happens when we gather together in one accord. The Bible talks about in, in the first part that they went back to their own people. So Peter and John had faced a huge dilemma. They had now been persecuted for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what did they do? They went home. They went back to family. They began to talk about the things that the enemy was trying to do. And what did the church decide to do? They decided to link up. They decided to create a bond that was rivaling the challenge that they were experiencing. The Bible said that when they linked up and they began to pray, it wasn't just a unity in their natural. There was a supernatural movement that began to occur. It says here that it was a literal foundation, a literal shaking because of their unity. Here's the thing, church. The reason why we are, exist, the reason why God puts us in families is to create bonds that cannot be broken. It's to cause things that are coming up against your family, that are coming up against you at work, that are coming up against you in your mind. Just imagine if you were to come back to your own company after hearing a negative report from the doctor after you have been fired and you go back to your own family and you tell your family what is happening in your life and that family begins to take account see here's the thing family takes accountability not just for themselves but for those who are members of that family so imagine what happens when family comes together and take account of what is happening in your life. There's a literal shaking. What is happening that we do not see because there's a new, real supernatural world. And I want to be clear about that. What is supernatural? Supernatural is what we see physically is operated about on by things that we do not see. So when we gather together, what it symbolizes in the world that we do not see is that this person cannot be messed with. That this person is covered by the Lord. Force, force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. Okay, I want to establish some physics. I did not read physics. Bear with me. Force applied over time creates an impulse. A change in momentum. So what you are seeing happen was the men that were linked up began to generate their own force. So there is an opposing component coming against that force. That power is able to re repel. When you have a family that you are a part of, what happens is you taking your situation to that family causes there to be more voices raised on your behalf. You don't stand before God by yourself. What God begins to see is brothers and sisters linked up with you saying we are in agreement with your will concerning this person's life. The Bible talks about unity and a threefold cord not being broken. So, we talk about it in the context of marriage, and that does exist in the context of marriage. But imagine, just for a minute, 
Life is happening to you. Life will happen to you. And you say to yourself, I got my people. Okay, little known fact, I was a tiny child, but I did not back away from fights. <laughs> little known fact. So in school, <laughs> I, my sister um, was a little bit more gentler than I was. But me, I wouldn't start the fight, but I'll finish it. <laughs> oh, so true. But here's what I did. In the fight, I did not do the, all the kicking and the punching. That's, I'm a lady. <laughs> what I would do is I would go back to my friends and be like, this little person is coming. Do, do, do. Give them the whole story, the whole spiel. I remember two of my friends who are more whew, something else than me. And they would say, well, we're waiting for you at 3 p.m. <laughs> and I'm in the back. <laughs> and I'm in the back, yeah, tell them, tell them. And I'm like, okay, let me go wear my shorts because I'm a lady. But what happened was I had created my own group. I created people who would come to my aid when I needed. I had formed a bond with people that even if I was wrong, they did not care. <laughs> even, I, even if I was the instigator, they were okay with having my back. And these little group of girls and two boys <laughs> would gather and I would have peace. Imagine that even if there are things happening in your life, you possibly might be the instigator for it, but you got family. You got family. You got somebody who will stand in the gap for you. My sister did not enter the foray. I told you she was gentle. She was, she was gentle. She didn't fight. But I did. But imagine if you had people that you can go back to and say, hey, Life is a little tough right now. Can you pray with me? Can you pray for me? Can you, can you have my back? Can you, can you support me? Hey, my business isn't thriving and you have this particular expertise. Can you, can you come and see about me so I don't have to pay thousands of dollars on a consultant? That's family. That's family. I love family. The second thing I wanted to share with you is that unity is create or creates out of nothing. Unity creates out of nothing. Go to Genesis 11, 1 to 6. Genesis 11, 1 to 6. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Imagine that. There are no different languages. Everybody spoke the same thing. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, go, let go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime and had mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach up unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And they all have the same language. They were not gathering for good. These were mere men and women who were gathered together to do something that was evil. They were not gathered to do anything good. And God came down and took a look and said, hey, we don't want that kind of unity. We don't want the kind of unity that distracts, that creates issues. Rather, we want a unity which he reinstituted in the church that uplifts 
and gives people hope. So when you have unity, things can literally be created out of nothing. If man who did not have God could create something without his presence, talk about when we got the Holy Spirit. Let me remind you in Acts 2, the Holy Spirit came and created a new normal, reset the stage, and caused people to become of one accord and one might. The thing that the enemy tried to do with the Tower of Babel, God redeemed in Acts chapter 2. He now allowed the people who were now united as one from different tribes and languages to hear the gospel message in their language. God did not take away the their language, he just diffused the barrier to, do, to, to distractions. So the Holy Spirit comes and recreates what man tried to do in its own power. Imagine, I just want to invite you to a context where you do not do life by yourself. I just want to ima have you imagine the possibility that when you go out to things, when things are happening, you have a cloud of people behind you who are praying for you, who are fighting on your behalf. When you send a text message, they respond and say, I got you. There are some friends I can text today. It does not matter the time. And they will pick up and I'll say, hey, this is what I'm going through. Can you? I don't even finish the question because in that moment, they understand the power of unity and one accord. That is what God is trying to build. This is the church. When the Bible says, this is the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What he was literally re referring to is a unified body. See, Jesus is coming for a church, a unified church, regardless of denomination. He is coming for a church. And what that means is the gates of hell against that church cannot prevail because remember force and momentum and the gathering of people causes the enemy to flee. I just want to encourage you today. Let me give you some thoughts. I feel in my spirit, y'all are here already. I feel in my spirit that some of the issues that you might be facing is because there's no gregarious force behind you. There's nobody that knows your name, knows your issue. You know my name. I'm a human being. I don't know your name. But there is a need for a gregarious force behind you. Unity makes you known. Psalm 68 verse 6. God sets the lonely in families and he leads out the prisoners with singing but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. He takes an opportunity when you are in family to be a father. We have been talking about the benefits that we have in Christ, but as believers, sometimes we operate out of an orphan spirit. And an orphan spirit is, says, I am already rejected. I am not accepted. I have assumed the position that I will not be liked. I have assumed the position that this is not for me. But God is saying, I am your father. And I created a home for you. And I want to place you in that home. I have made provision that everything you need for your life can be found within that home. As a family, you experience prestige, favor, acceleration, honor. I don't need to repeat the same mistakes of my brothers and sisters. If you've already gone through something, why do I need to go through it? Why do I need to experience your pain? That's not necessary. That's unnecessary. 
At The Well, I like to say that we are not a church with small groups. We are a church of small groups. The difference is the groups are not an addition to, it's not programmatic. The groups is the life source for The Well because it is within the context of family that healing can take place. To two are better than one, Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls, and no one is there to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can anyone keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. I would love for you guys to just rise to your feet <clears throat> this morning. The first call I want to make, and you can bow your head, close your eyes, be in a reflective mode, think about yourself and where you are with your journey. It's for those who have been hurt, who have been rejected, you have felt at times like you did not fit in, actually made to feel like you did not fit in. There's something that um, I believe in strongly, it's forgiveness, asking God to help you to forgive, extending forgiveness, even though the person is not standing in front of you, but asking God to help you to forgive because forgiveness, that's a whole different story. That breaks chains, boy. Literally breaks chains. chains. So if that's you in, in your heart, I'm going to say a prayer on your behalf and just come into agreement with that prayer. Father, I forgive, I choose to forgive those who have hurt me, those who have pushed me away, those who have made who I am just not necessary. Father, I accept your love for me. I am not rejected. I am not alone. I am loved by you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, because of your free gift. I am naturally a part of the family of Jesus Christ. And I thank you that your mercy has been extended to me. In Jesus' name, amen.